Please join your hands. Close your eyes. We'll start with the Navkar Mantra chanting. Namo Arihantanam, Namo Siddhanam, Namo Ayariyanam, Namo Vajayanam, Namo Loe Savasabunam, Aso Panchinamukaro, Sava Pava Panashino, Mangalanam Chase of Vasim, Padimam Havai Mangalam, Namo Arihantanam, Namo Sidhanam, Namo Ayariyanam, Namo Vajayanam. Namo loe sava sahunam. Aso panchinamukaro. Sava pava panashino. Mangalanam chais of vasim. Padimam havai mangalam. Namo arihantanam. Namo sedhanam. Namo ayariyanam. Namo vajayanam. Namo Lodisava Sahunam Aso Panchinamukaro Sava Pava Panashino Mangalanam Chase of Vais Padimam Havai Mangalam Padimam Havai Mangalam Padimam Havai Mangalam Bolo Adinath Bhagwan Ki Jai Acharya Manatunga Ji Maharaj Ki Jai Shri Bhaktambar Mahastotr ki jai, Jin Shashan Jin Dev ji ki jai, Chaubis Tirtankar Bhagwan ki jai. Okay, everyone. So let's start with the session. Um, we chose for one, two, five. That was... Anvi for uh, Shloka 125. Um, do you see them here? No. Oh, yeah, she is here. Um, Anvi. It's Anvi, right? Ashiji is Anvi? Anvi, Anvi Shah. Okay, one second. There you are. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Anvi, please go ahead. <laughs> Everybody okay. follow along with Anvi. Um, they are uh, twin uh, uh, sisters, so they both are going to recite today. Amya and Anvi. Okay. One minute. Let's see. Pakamara Pranata Muni Mani Prabhana Mujotakam Danita Papata Mopitanam Samya Pranam Yajina Pada Yukam Yukada Panam Panam Pavachale Patatam Jananam The Sam Sutta Sakalavan Mayatatva Boda Duda the booty, but to be through a local night, I saw the jagat, jitter, hurry, you die. So shake it up, I'm a big gun, but an amgin and rum. Would you have been a baby who died to kill father Peter? So from some old yamater be cut up, oh, hum. Adam be high, a jealous son, sit a mimbu bimba. Manyaka 
सोहम तथा पिथ भक्ति वशान मुनीष कर्तुम सवन विगत शक्ति रपी प्रवीत Again, everybody, fold your hands. Follow along with Keval. You can also recite with your mute on. Okay. I don't know. Sixteen. We are not prepared. We are not prepared yet. Okay, no problem. No Anyone problem. else? Um, want to go for And Viha. Sorry, who did you call on? Oh, Priksha is saying she can do it. Priksha is saying she can do it. Okay. Priksha, go ahead. Six to ten. Alpa shutam shutavatam parihas tam vadhati reva mukari guru te balanam yatko kila kila matha. मथुरम चाम्रचारुकलिकापमक्षति शरीर भाजपोकमलिनेशेषमाशु सूर्यांशु भिन्न मृषावरमंदकार ुतिमुपेतिमस्तमस्तोषम जगदाकुरीताभेवदूषणूतनाथूतेभवंतमीष्टुवंतुलाभवती ब्यूटीफुल परीक्षा थैंक यू सो मच नेक्स्ट वी हैव काव्य फॉर इलेवन टू सिक्सटीन अनम्यूट काव्य काव्य प्लीज गो हेड शिखरुचिपरमाभुवनायकूत मनो न विकार मार्ग 
ಶಿಖರಂ ಚಲಿತ ಕದಾಚಿತ್ ನಿಧೂಮವರ್ತಿಯ ಪವಚಿತ ತೇಲ ಪೂರ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಗತ್ರಯಮಿದ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಕರೋಷಿ ಗಮ್ಯೋನ ಚಾತು ಮರುತ ಚಲಿತ ಚಲಾನ ದೀಪೋಪರಸ್ವಮಸಿ ನಾಥ ಜಗತ್ ಪ್ರಕಾಶ ಜೈ ಜಿನೇಂದ್ರ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಕಾವ್ಯ ಕೆನ್ ಬಿ ಸಿ ಯೋರ್ ಫೇಸ್ you have a very melodious voice yeah very beautiful beautiful voice very good thank you very much so far all three now we've got the fourth one very good job deep and straight uh, fourth one i amazing yes very good deep, deep um, and straight 17 to 22 yeah one second let me see them okay. yeah i don't think they are here yet so uh, we need volunteers for the next 17 to 22 I think somebody, somebody was saying in the chat. Somebody has not done it chat. before. Okay, Tanmay? I've got Aarav. Are you getting Aarav? Go ahead. Yeah, Tanmay was also saying in the chat. 16th. Bhaiya, is it from 16th? Through 17th. 17th. Naastam kadachi dupaya sina rahu gamya Spashti karoji sahasa yuga palj ganti ನಾಬೋದರೋದರನಿರುದ್ಧ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭಾವ ಸೂರ್ಯಾದಿ ಶಾಯಿ ಮಹಿಮಾಸಿ ಮುನೇಂದ್ರ ಲೋಕೆ ನಿತ್ಯೋದಯ ದಲಿತ ಮೋಹ ಮಹಾಂಧಕಾರ ಗಮ್ಯ ನ ರಾಹು ವದನ ಸ್ಯನ ವಾರಿದಾನ ವಿಭ್ರಾಜತೆ ತವಪು ವಿಭ್ರಾಜತೆ ತವ ಮುಖಾಬ್ಜ ಮನಲ್ಪ ಕಾಂತಿ ವಿದ್ಯೋತಯ ಜಗದ ಪೂರ್ವ ಶಶಾಂಕ ಬಿಂಬಂ ಕಿಂ ಷರ್ಭರೀಷು ಶಶಿ ನಾಹಿ ವಿವಸ್ತುಷ್ಮನ್ ಮುಖೇಂದು ದಲಿತೇಶು ತಮಸ್ಸು ನಾಥ ನಿಷ್ಪನ್ನ ಶಾಲ್ಯ ಮನಿಷಾಲ್ಯ ನಿಜೀವಲೋಕೆ ಕಾರ್ಯಂಕಿಯ ಜಲಧರೆ ಜರಬಾರ ನಂಬೆ ಹರಿಹರಾಶು ನಾಯಕೇಶು ತೇಜಸ್ಮುರನ್ ಮಹಿಷಿಯಾತೀಯ ತಾಮಹತ್ವಂ ನೈವಂ ತು ಕಾಚು ಶಕಲೆ ಕಿರಣಾಕುಲೇಪಿ ಮನ್ಯೆ ವರಂ ಹರಿಹರಾದಯ ದೃಷ್ಟ ದೃಷ್ಟೇಶು ಯೇಷು ಹೃದಯ ತ್ವಯಿ ತೋಷ ಮೇತಿ ಅನಾಯಿಷಾ uh anaisha was six number she did yesterday and once she was going to do today yeah uh, today uh, she has to recite six number shloka because okay. she okay anaisha number six please alpa shutam shutavatam parihasa dama ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ this week we gonna complete 24 shlokas it's a very yeah. very big achievement everyone please Manu give Manu. a big round of applause for your own self for devoting so much of your time very good job you know what that means we are halfway there 
I'm so proud of each one of you. I can't see you like all clapping. Please clap for yourself. It's a it's an achievement for your own. Pat yourself on the back too. Give yourself your credit. Lots of hard work. You guys are like sponges. You guys are learning very quickly. And for those who have joined recently, so you also deserve a big round of applause because you will be traveling halfway again. Like, so very good. And we welcome you all on this yes. excellent journey, and I hope you all will like it. Mm. Okay. Moving ahead. Yesterday we talked about twenty second mm. till twenty second shloka. So today's uh, Bodh shlokas they focus on the appreciation and virtues of Lord Adinath. Now we, you might be wondering, like. Okay, the entire uh, uh, stotra is based on you know devotion, virtues, and appreciation. So why these shlokas are very uh, special? So you'll get to know when we'll move further to the meaning. Okay, for twenty-third shloka, what can you observe in this picture? Anyone? Yeah, I'm unmuting Kriti. Kriti, go ahead. So I observe there is uh, Adinath Bhagwan, and then there is uh, some people who are like uh, who are um, um, like praying to Adinath, and there is. Manatunga ji, that uh, he's writing Bhaktamar, and I can see a bull with a man uh, falling, fell down, and I can see mm -hmm. a bull who is like, um, I think, meditating um, and his power. What is that light emitting? Fire. From his okay. Thank you. Anyone else has a different observation? So um, I'm going to unmute uh, Anvesha. Anvesha, please go ahead. Uh, so I can see that uh, Adira Bhattar is sitting on a lotus and Acharya Maratunga ji is writing Bhattamal. There is also a monk praying to and on the bottom of the picture there is a person uh, meditating and I think he's going to moksha mm -hmm. and uh, on the side of him there is a cow there is a man on a cow that is falling off why do you think that cow uh, like that man he's hit by the bull or something why he's lying down what do you think Okay. okay do you Anisha? observe anything else near uh, this person, like who is on the floor? Can you observe the few things that are around him? Um, there's a a bull and a man falling down hmm? on the bull, and it looks like the person is going to move. He's going okay. up. Now, can you see something else? I can see I can see a crown and like exactly. a stick, and he has some type of rope in his hand. Okay, so very good. And what is this figure? Uh, the white figure. What does it represent? A soul. Okay, and why is it above the head of this person who is meditating? He's going to Moks. Okay, very good, very good. Thank you so much. So here we have main important things as this is like group of uh, monks who are praying. 
and then there is some fire or some kind of light emitting from the person who is meditating and then there is some soul and the king looks like he's a king because he has a crown so he's fallen on the ground with the bull so now let's move further to know what is actually happening but before that let's cover the pronunciation so the first word is tomamananti twam plus amananti twam plus amananti so you will see uh, in both these shlokas 23rd and 24th you will see the usage of twam multiple times so twam is generally used for like uh, to you just like to your elders you say aap in hindi and to like to to the younger people and aap to the elder people but here we are using to means twam to uh, lord adinath tum so we'll see like why we are using it twam plus amananti means believe amananti munayah munayah so munayah originally means monks but in this context they mean the learned ones who have great knowledge munayah parmam parmam means supreme or the ultimate one umansah umansa umansa means body or personality or as you saw in the picture so in this context it means the soul which is residing inside the body umansa next line madhitya varna mamulan so we'll break it the original word is actually aditya varnam and puman it, it's pumansam but since like uh, when we'll join them together so ma will m will uh, move on with the next word which is aditya varnam so it's maditya varnam aditya varnam aditya varnam means brighter than the sun plus amalan 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 means serene or pure amalan maditya varnam amalan maditya varna amalan next word tamasah tamasah pronounce it with me tamasah i can't see lips moving here please pronounce with me tamasah means ignorance or darkness next is parastat far away tamasah parastat pa ras tat maditya varnam amlan tamasah parastat so i'll go over the two lines one more time twam plus amananti which will give you to amananti munayah munayah parimam parimam umansa next word maditya because m move to the next word maditya varna mamalan now it will be mamalan again 
in this entire shloka so you will see m also like it it's been shifted to the next word it has to be with uh, like according to the actual word it has to be with the original word like varnam but it will shift to the next word because of some rules so it's maditya varna mamalan tamasah parastat 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 parave twameva again you see twa is used here twa meva means only you twa meva next samyak upalabhya samyak means very well samyak upalabhya upalabhya means attain so when you will pronounce it it would be samya gupalabhya little bit big word try to pronounce with me samya gupalabhya attained very well jayanti 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 means conquer jayanti mrityum 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 means death mri kyum twameva samya gupalabhya jayanti mrityum you'll uh, say r very very small like you don't have to put much pressure over it it's mrityum next and last line nanya nanya means any other previous in the previous line we were talking about only you like only one person and in the last line we are talking about any other person nanya shiva so shiva originally means the shiva god but in this context he, it means like well wisher shiva shiva padasya shiva padasya shiva padasya means salvation the path which is uh, achieved by shiva salvation shiva padasya munindra munindra means the lord of munis panthah panthah means path panthah nanya shiva shiv padasya munindra panthah i'll go over the entire shloka make sure i want to see all the lips sinking pronouncing it with me twa mamananti twa mamananti munayah munayah paramam paramam humansa humansa maditya maditya varna mamalan varna mamalan tamasah tamasah parastat parastat twameev twameev samyak upalabhya samyak kupalabhya jayanti jayanti mrityum mrityum nanyah nanyah shivah shivah shivapadasya shivapadasya 
मुनींद्र पंथ पंथ ओके सो एवरी वन प्लीज सिंग अलॉन्ग विद मी एंड देन वी लास्क वन ऑफ यू टू सिंग मनती मुनय पर मेतवर्ण ममल तमस परस्ता सम्यगुपलाभ्यजयती मृत्यु नान्य शिव शिव पद से मुनींद्र पंथ मनती मुनय पर मेत वर्ण ममल तमस परस्ता सम्यगुपलाभ्यजयती मृत्यु नान्य शिव शिव पद से मुनींद्र पंथ मनती मुनय पर मेतवर्ण ममल तमस परस्ता सम्यगुपलाभ्यजयती मृत्यु नान्य शिव शिव पद से मुनींद्र पंथ Is the pronunciation clear? Who wants to recite? Anyone volunteer to recite Shloka twenty-three? Misha and Umang. Sorry, Ashish, who should I mute? मनती मुनय पर मेतवर्ण ममल तमस परस्ता सम्यगुपलाभ्यजयती मृत्यु नान्य शिव शिव पद से मुनिंद वेरी गुड वेरी गुड okay so as we notice in the picture as well as i said there is some fire some soul emitting from it and there is some person who is lying down so what's happening here is acharya manatumbe ji while he is praising so first thing as i mentioned like twam so why we say uh to like we are referring twam to lord adinatha he is he is bigger than us but still we are referring him as tum instead of aap why so okay i want to know like who is bigger the devotee is big, bigger or the god is bigger and why what do you think i'm going to unmute krita krita please go ahead and answer um i think the god is bigger because the devotee might not know as much as the god the god mm -hmm. um probably would have more mm -hmm. knowledge and like as an example um your teacher if they teach you so your teacher would be um bigger than you so same thing the god would be bigger than the devotee very good very good mm -hmm. anyone has a different point of view Yes, sir. I'm going to ask everybody to lower your hands and then raise your hand again if you have a different point of view. Okay, is there anyone who believes like the devotee is bigger than God? Okay, so 
Only those people raise their hands if they believe that. So we'll call on you. Okay. I've asked Akshay and Ronnie. Uh, yeah. So, um, what I think is that the God is bigger and, um, there's many people on the side just praying to the God and someone's meditating under the God and Adhanath Bhagwan is writing the Vakthana Stotra. And then I see some king with a, st there's a stick falling and a rope and his crown falling with a bull. Okay. Okay. So is there anyone who believes like a uh, devotee is greater than the God? I've got Kavya. Kavya, please go ahead. <laughs> Miran? Yeah. So I think the devotee is like, uh, I think it's same as God. Because like a devotee can also become God if it destroys all its inner negativities and it destroys all its pop and karma. Very good, very good. So yes, you cannot say like that God is greater and you cannot say devotee is greater. Both are equal in some or the other way. There is uh, the saying like, so God, where do God resides? Apart from temples, he resides in our heart. So if we can give like shelter to God, if we can let him reside in our hearts. So what does that mean? Like devotee's heart is so much big. That he can occupy God also in it. So I'm not talking about like the size. But in a way both are equal. So we cannot assume like one of them to be greater than the other one. So that's what like Adinath Bhagwan. Uh, Lord. Sorry. Acharya Manatunda ji is saying while praying. That um, you are the master of all the monks. By monks as I said earlier. I mean like the learned ones. Who are very knowledgeable people. So you are the master of all of them. And then not only your external personality, but your inner personality. That was the reference why that fire was used and that inner personality was the soul. So Parmam Pumansa, as you can see in the first line, that is the ultimate personality, like the, the greater personality. And that personality is of Lord Adina. So he's saying like not only is your external personality is great and impressive, but so is your inner personality too. So that what does that mean? That means that your body and your soul both are very eminent and excellent. And in the second line, why he uses tamasaha parastat. So what does tamasaha means? Darkness, ignorance. But it has three meanings. So first is like uh, the darkness. The another one is demerit, like uh, the pap karm that we do, as Miran mentioned. And the third one is tamoguna, like the bad qualities. So he's saying like one who can conquer all these kind of ignorance uh, is uh, no one else can do that. Only you can do it since you are far more above than all these, um, you know, like mithyat, the ignorance, darkness. You are the top superior one. So and. As we saw, like uh, that fire was emitting, like that light was emitting. So that is the representation of again, like sun. So if you uh, if you have seen, so sunset or sunrise, like the colors over there. So they have all the colors, and that combination of color is considered as the most beautiful color, colorful combination on this entire uh, like universe. The combination uh, emitting from the sun. Be it sunset or sunrise, both are very unique in their own way. Even like uh, in Preksha meditation also, we tend to focus on like the rays of the sun because those colors are very, very attractive. So what is Acharya ji saying here? That you are that kind of sun which never sets down and there is always light, like always beautiful colors around you. And why is that? Because Miran again mentioned like, uh, you have got rid of all your all kind of your karmas, all your Vedaniya karmas, all your Mohiniya karmas. So you have got rid of all those karmas. And that's why you are just shining and shining. Right. And then last line when he says, so he means that what you are doing is you are showing the path to others. 
like through your enlightenment the entire world is lighten up and all you are doing is you are mo motivating others to follow your qualities so overall like he has mentioned uh, he has described the qualities of lord adinath as the one who is always enlightened and always like illuminating and another quality third quality that he has mentioned is samya guplabhya so he is the one like who has overcome death also god cannot die or god cannot be born again why because he he do not have anything left like he has got rid of all his attachments and he is free, free from all of them so okay sometimes what happens is like if you sleep or if you eat the more you eat the more you need energy to digest it right but god do not eat god do not sleep so he is full of energy and he he where is he using that energy he is using that energy to enlighten others to motivate others to provide knowledge to the other people so that's the overall meaning of uh, this shloka so it's like one may try and other path of enlightenment but lord the path that you have preached to all the human beings and not to the human beings to all the beings to all the creatures is the shortest safest and ultimately it is accepted by all no one is denying that okay this is not the right path so everyone accept it and everyone follows that path that's the overall meaning so in this shloka basically uh, acharya manatumya ji has woven a garland which is full of virtues of lord adinath so while i'll uh, i'll move on to the pronunciation i'll also explain the meaning along with it and i want you to listen carefully and in the end i'll ask you all the qualities so just note them down one by one as we move ahead okay so first word is tvama vyayam tvam plus avyayam avyayam again tvam is used here which means to you or you and the first quality of lord adinath being mentioned here that he is eternal he is immortal avyam tvama vyayam So avyam is the first flower of garland that Acharya Manatunga ji has made, and by that he is he means like that uh, Lord Adinath is immortal and he is imperishable, just like Akshay means rice which cannot be broken. So he is also immortal. Nothing else is imperishable like him, like men and made uh, nature. So there are other things which uh, take birth and then they die. but lord ajina he is eternal forever tvam vyayam means you are immortal second vibhum vibhum means potent vibhum vibhum means potent or you can say universal also so that is the second flower in the garland that uh, lord adinath is universal But why because he is accepted by everyone and he is respected by not only uh, by like normal human beings he is respected by each and every creature on this earth because if you know that Sh uh, lord shiva he is also being compared with lord adinath like they both are uh, similar kind of an avatar vibhum tvam vyayam vibhum third is achintayam means unthinkable or unimaginable achintayam achintayam for him nothing is impossible like what he can do so no, nothing can be said or thought about it so he is unimaginable so acharya manatunga ji is saying your greatness is urgentium your greatness is unthinkable 
unimaginable and inexpressible plus a sankhyam a sankhyam means numerous so that is the fourth flower in the garland innumerable so acharya ji is saying that lord you are innumerable beyond numbers i cannot count your virtues like you have so many virtues that i cannot count it and nobody is capable of expressing your qualities because your virtues are not only limit not limited to any number so when you will combine both of them it would be chintya masankhya chintya masankhya so you will see here like um it's it's repetition over here that m it was uh, in the next word but it was shifted to the previous word because all of these are in the accusative case so that's why it's chintya masankhya next is madhyam but since m was shifted to the previous word it's adhyam means pioneer so that's the fifth flower in the garland adhyam means pioneer so he's saying lord you are the pioneer you are the first tithankar first king and uh, also you are the first initiator so you are the one who has uh, like initiated each and everything adhyam swam vyayam vibhum chintya masankhya madhyam so when we'll pronounce it we'll not pronounce it as adhyam it will uh, com- it will be combined so it's madhyam next line brahmana brahmana means lord of creation brahma is considered in hindu religion and he is considered as the lord uh, who has created everything but here adinath is also considered as the one who has created this entire universe brahmana meeshwara meeshwara so meeshwara again it's brahmanam and then ishwara ishwara means god and that is the seventh uh, flower in the garland god here god is just not like the one who listens to us he's like who has the potential to do something not do something and like doing something it's it's like to do not do and for sure doing something unbelievable so ishwar has the power to turn a worthy person into worthless and a worthless person into worthy person like he can do anything and everything and if he do not want to do anything so he will not do nothing it's like that like vice versa so he's saying lord you are ishwar because you have reformed and restructured this entire society moreover you have created a great evolution in which we all are part of it brahmana meeshwara manantam so again m was in the previous one it's anantam but when we'll pronounce it it would be manantam means infinite that is another virtue of lord adinath so he say uh, acharya ji is saying you are infinite you have infinite knowledge you have infinite perception bliss and power manantam manantam next word anang ketum anang ketum so that is the ninth flower in the garland that acharya mantum ji has added while talking about the virtues now why so as we discussed in the previous shloka that ketu because of ketu and rahu there is eclipse and 
be it like sun's light or moon's light it do not uh, we cannot see it like properly the sun and moon are eclipsed by ketu and rahu so in this context what he is saying is like you are like ketu for the destruction of kamdev like whenever we have the feeling of lust or uh, we want to achieve like any other pleasure so it uh, nullifies that effect those feelings and help us to grow spiritually like it uh, channelizes our feeling from downward to the upward side so you are like ketu for the destruction of kamdev anang ketum anang ketum brahman meeshwara manantam manantam anang ketum anang ketum brahman meeshwara manantam anang ketum third line yogishwaram yogishwaram yogi plus ishwaram yogishwaram means you are the lord of the yogis so this is another flower in the garden that we will add why he is saying that you are the lord of yogis because like this is a fact um even like in bhagavad gita so lord rishabdev is described as avadur yogi like the one who has renounced the entire world and we all know that's why he become liberated right so that's why he's uh, referred to as a lord of the yogis and also uh, lord rishabh dev he was the knower of all the yoga practices like spiritual yoga practices there are recent ones that have recently been introduced but the spiritual practices he was aware of all of them and among yoga also he was the pioneer like he was the first one who initiated it so that's why he's referred here as yogishwaram vidita vidita means plentiful yoga vidita yoga yogishwaram vidita yoga yoga means joining together manek mekam so again manek plus ekam this is the 11th flower in the garden so far we have discussed about 10 virtues manek ekam so what is he saying you are anek like one as well as many uh so there is like one one of the sutra which is a uh, gyata sutra and in which like someone asked mahavir lord mahavir that you are one or many so at that time mahavira replied that i am one as well as many manek mekam manek mekam so what does one as well as many means one soul but present in many beings many creatures in the different different form so that's why he's saying lord you are many as well as one because you are a liberated soul manek mekam manek mekam yogishwaram vidita yoga manek mekam last line jnana jnana means knowledge swarupam means form jnana swarupam means you are the embodiment of knowledge jnana swarupam our body do not know anything but our soul knows everything so since lord adinath is the liberated soul he is the pure soul he knows he has 
uh, he has attained like enlightenment so he has immense knowledge wisdom and power into him that's why he's referred to as jnana swarupam embodiment of knowledge form of knowledge amalam amalam we discussed previously as well means pure amalam that is another flower in the garland of virtues that lord adinath is pure immaculate and enlightenment enlightened because why because he has destroyed all the dust and dirt of all the karmas amalam next word pravadanti pravadanti santah santah so pravadanti means it is being said by whom by the monks and monks again means the learned ones so i'll go over the words again of entire shloka twamavyayam twamavyayam so you will put little bit pressure on of and then vyayam twamavyayam vibhuma achintyam asankhyam it will give us chintya masankhya chintya masankhya madhyam madhyam brahmana brahmana meeshwara meeshwara mananta and then m manantam anang ketum so we'll do the shifting it would be mananta manang ketum brahmana meeshwara mananta manang ketum yogishwaram yogishwaram yogi plus ishwar vidita yoga manek mekam manek mekam jnana jnana swarupa jnana swarupa mamalam mamalam pravadanti pravadanti santah santah i hope it's clear please recite with me vamavyayam vibhuma chintyam sankhya madhyam brahmana meeshwara manant manang ketum yogeeshwaram vidit yoga manek mekam jnana swarup mamalam pravadanti santah tvama vyayam vibhuma chintyam sankhya madhyam brahmana meeshwar manant manang ketum yogi ishwar vidit yog manek mekam jnana swarup mamalam pravadanti santah tvama vyayam vibhuma chintyam sankhya madhyam brahmana meeshwar manant manang ketum yogeeshwaram vidit yog manik mekam jnana swarup mamalam pravadanti santah i hope the pronunciation is clear anyone wants to give a try i have krita she wants to try and then i i have a couple of questions 
questions. Okay. Uh, so we'll do that one by one. Krita, go ahead. ज्ञानस्वरूपमला very good, Krita. You have, uh, you have separated each and every word very nicely. Very good. Thank you. Uh, questions? Uh, there's one question. What is the meaning of shloka number 23? 23? Oh. Yeah. Like okay. the use? asking that question. Let me go back to 23 then. Okay, so as I mentioned, like in this uh, shloka, there are three qualities of Lord that has been highlighted here. Firstly, like he's compared with the sun. Why? Because uh, just like the way the sun has, the sun shines and it emits like all its rays and then provides a light. So in the similar way, like uh, Lord Adina provides a light of enlightenment to all of us. And he's kind of a sun. He's brighter than the sun actually. And he never fades down. So the other thing, Tamasa Purasta. So he is here referred to as one who has uh, shed off all his karmas. And then he has is, he is, uh, crossed the level of ignorance and darkness. He, he has become liberated. Why? Because he has shed all the karmas. And the third one is Paramam Pumansa, means he is a very ultimate, a very great personality. Again, because of the fact that he is far away from all the cycle of rebirths, like death and uh, birth. As you can, someone pointed out, like uh, there is this, uh, like on the bull, there is this person who is Yama. So yeah, he do not have any fear of birth or death because he is free from all kinds of attachment. So basically, uh, in this shloka, Acharya Manatunga Ji is saying that you are the master of all the monks and upon lots of thoughts and hypotheses that have been formed by you. So like we, all the uh, scholars, so as I said, like monks means the learned ones. They have finally concluded that you are the only preacher who of Kebal Gyana. And uh, you have ultimate enlightenment, which means like Paramam Pumansa. And hence, you are Param Purusha, like the Supreme Soul. So, yeah, that's like the main meaning of it. And basically, in this, like in the previous shlokas, Acharya Manitunga Ji has made a lot of comparison. But in this, he is focusing on more on the qualities and virtues of Lord Adinath. Is it clear? Yes, Ashish, go ahead with the rest of the thing. Okay. And Aswasti also replied, yes, thank you. Okay. Yes. So, observations. Amiya, please go ahead. So I observe that um, it looks like there are some babes like worshipping Lord Adinath. And mm -hmm. they're also normal people. And it looks like they're saying like mantras in his praises. And remember mm -hmm. you told us about the uh, metaphorically the garland of virtues. It looks like mm -hmm. um, he made the garland of virtues. And they're like, um, and the people are saying that his like really good virtues. And I guess mm -hmm. they're trying to say that like all creatures um, bow down to him. Because it also shows babes and normal human beings are bowing down. The Lord Adina. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very rightly mentioned out that these all like the waves that you can see. So it's a garland of virtues. Can anyone uh, like pronounce these? What is it written here? 
maybe someone from india what uh, is it written mahavir neminath please go ahead okay preksha go ahead i don't really know what it says no worries okay. uh, can you hear me yes yes vidhi actually um i i see lord adinath here bhagwan and i guess no, can you can you read this like can yeah. you read what is it written here aap avinashi aap vibhu achi nrite ho okay let's do one by one sorry 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 let's do one by one first one is aap avinashi ho okay which means like the first word the first flower that we uh, put in the garland means avya avyam next one aap vibhu ho yeah that means vibhum the second word the second flower third piece achinetya ho very good means achintyam unimaginable uh, unthinkable asankhya asankhya ho very good means innumerable the fourth flower that acharya manatunga ji put in the garland next adi purush ho adi purush ho very good ma adyam next please Bra- brahma ho brahma ho means brahma brahma means the uh, lord of the creation who has created everything good ishwar ho ishwar that was again the next word brahma na ishwara anant ho anant means infinite very good tam vijay ho ananga ketu very good yo ishwar ho mhm uh, means yo- yogis the lord of the yogis chir gyan mai ho very good means gyan swarupa embodiment of knowledge form of knowledge param nirmal ho param nirmal means amlam pure serene anang ketu ho yeah like like ketu who who is the destroyer of kamdeva very good so these are all all the virtues in shloka 24 that acharya manatunga ji has mentioned and anyone can see like why there are so many people like what is their significance not all the people are of the same uh, level currently avni go ahead um so they are all there because they are all praising adinath bhagwan they're like saying adinath adinath bhagwan praises and that's why like it's showing in all of the like devs are there because they also want to praise adinath bhagwan very good very good and there is another thing that as i mentioned like lord adinath bhagwan is accepted by everyone and in all religions so that's why you can see like there are dev dev devis and then there are lay people over here and then there is like some other group of people so overall like through this shloka acharya manatunga ji is trying to highlight the virtues and then along with it what he is saying is like so just like alphabets we we have alphabets right and innumerable words can be you know derived from those alphabets like even from if you'll join like few things so you will um, like rearrange them and make multiple words but lord adinath like the virtues that he has so they are uncountable they are innumerable just like the alphabets and consonants if you'll join them all together so many words can be formed and similarly with the virtue of lord adinath like there it's inexpressible that cannot be counted in numbers like that counting is beyond reach it's infinite so the main purpose of, of this shloka is 
basically to highlight the virtues of Lord Adina. And what we are doing is by praying it, like when we have woven all the virtues in the garland, and if we'll wear that in our in our neck, so that is like okay, that is in the 40th shloka as well. But these garlands, and if we will, you know, apply them in our own life also, so we will also aspire to become like Lord Adina. So that is the main aim of this uh, shloka. I hope the meaning is clear to everyone. And uh, there is one more, uh, like there is, I read somewhere, like there is a story associated, like not a story, but it's an example. So what happens is like once there was a beggar and then someone like, uh, so he, he was begging and then there come uh, a man. He was in his car and he just like got down and he gave him 100 rupees or 100 dollars. So then the be beggar said that, um, like, please do not give me this much. Save some for yourself. Have you ever seen like any be beggar who will be saying that, OK, do not give me 100, like keep some for you and then give me like less. Generally, what happens is if, if you will give 100, so they will ask for like more 200 or something like that. But no. So why it happened? Because then uh, like that man asked him, like, why are you saying that? Why you are not accepting all the money? So he told him that, OK, once I was also a rich and filthy man like you, but I spent like all my income unknowingly and just I just gave it to other people unconsciously. So what happened is like his um, money got finished, like got over whatever the wealth that he acquired accumulated in the past mm -hmm. years. It got all wasted. So the, what is uh, Acharya Manatunga Ji referring, trying to refer from this story is like we should think before making any action, like in our practical life also. If suppose if you are just ex, uh, making expenses but not earning anything, so we should be very thoughtful about it. And then there comes the concept of non-possession also, like we should limit ourselves with limited number of possessions. We should not be materialistic in this world. And once you will be free from all these materialistic things, that is that that will be one of the way to attain liberation. Then only you can become like Lord Adinath. 